Bushcraft 412 and today I want to give you guys a little bit of a secret when it comes to long-term food storage. Now I get a lot of guff from uh, the trolls saying you know I don't do anything you know as a prepper I never do anything with food storage and I should be doing that because that's the most important thing and yada 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 and you know what guys I've been prepping for like 10 years now. Food storage is kind of like old news for me. I have my food stores they're set so I never really covered it in videos because I kind of felt like there's just thousands of videos out there on the internet on long-term food storage. And I kind of noticed that now is, is, is you know, prepping is getting to be kind of a, a popular and mainstream thing. It's all over TV, you know, with doomsday preppers and all those shows that people are kind of losing sight of the budget-minded stuff. And I want to go over a couple, you know, probably the biggest secret when it comes to uh, long-term food storage because, you know, I get this all the time where people are like, well, you know, I can't afford to go out and spend $10 on a food-grade bucket and the Mylar bags and the oxygen absorbers and all that. And it seems like I'm always writing this to people in personal messages and comments. And I figured, you know, it's just time to make the video and then I can just kind of point people to this video. You don't need food-grade buckets. You do not need Mylar bags. The only thing you need to store dry foods, you know, your dry rice, beans, oatmeal, things like that. Dry foods, the only thing you need to store them are your used soda bottles and oxygen absorbers. Now, let me explain something. Is when I was younger, I used to homebrew beer. And, of course, when you homebrew beer, you, you brew it in food-grade plastic buckets. And... I would go to these homebrew stores and I would spend a fortune on these, uh, you know, the uh, amber, you know, bottles that you could bottle the beer in. And it just got too expensive. And the more and more I did it, it just got to the point where it was so expensive, I started doing research. And what did I learn? But these things right here are food-grade plastics. And you can tell. We're going to find this here and show you. Hopefully this shows up on camera. As you can see, there's a little triangle there on the bottom, right next to my thumb. And in that triangle is a one, and under it it says P-E-T-E. -E. It's very light. Usually on bottles it's at the uh, very bottom. And it's a triangle with a one that says P-E-T-E -E or P-E-T. That means it's food grade plastic. Food grade plastic means that, number one, it's not gonna leach chemicals or anything into what's inside it. And number two, it's an oxygen barrier which makes it say, you know, it makes it a good barrier for oxygen. So, when I was home brewing beer, I stopped spending a fortune on these you know, these uh, specialty bottles that I was getting from the homebrew stores and started packing my beer in soda bottles. And I actually found that, you know, it worked just as good and they stood up to the pressures of the carbonation just as good as as the expensive store bought ones. Now, fast forward now to prepping. You know, everyone says you should be putting food in Mylar bags. You know, Mylar bags have a uh, food-grade plastic lining covered with the Mylar outside that gives it the toughness and all that. Do you need those? No. Are they nice? Yeah, they're really cool. I mean, they are, they are a lot of fun and just really make uh, storing food a breeze. But you can put your dry food in this soda bottle. Get a funnel. Now, of course, you know, this one here is dirty, but... Uh, pull that out of the recycling. If you were to clean this, sanitize it with bleach water or whatever, let this thing air dry, fill this up with rice, squeeze an oxygen absorber in there and close this thing up tight, this will stay just as good as the food in the Mylar bag. And just to show you, this here, also food grade plastics. This here, also food grade plastics. But I don't recommend using these cheap water bottles with the small caps because they don't seal very good. As you can see the uh, how small the cap is versus how big the cap is on that. If you're going to use bottles, use the ones with the bigger caps. They have better threads and they seal a lot better. Now, you don't just need to use soda bottles. You can also use 2 liter soda bottles, 3 liter soda bottles, um, juice bottles. You know, just make sure they have... The most important thing is make sure they have a very good lid. Something that seals down very tight. And the best way to test it is ratchet this thing down real tight, submerge it in water and squeeze it. If any air bubbles come out, it's no good. But if, if, 
you know, you put it underwater, no air bubbles come out, you have a good oxygen barrier. Um, and from what I learned from home brewing is that this food grade plastic soda bottles are a lot stronger than glass. They are a lot better at holding pressure than any other alternative. So, you know, I think if you're putting it in the bags, the bags are very strong, but you could over carbonate the beer and it wouldn't explode in these bottles. You could tell, you could feel them and, you know, you're not going to destroy them by putting too big of an oxygen absorber in there. Um, so I highly recommend if you're, you know, if you're going to be doing this and doing it on a budget, recycle your soda bottles, clean them, dry them out, put your dry food in there, whether it's, uh, you know, rice, beans, you know, pancake mix or whatever. And then you're going to have to put in the oxygen absorber. In. And, and guys, I can't spend the time to do the math. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about the oxygen absorbers and how big they should use. Rule of thumb for one of these like soda bottles, you know, like a 20 ounce, you know, probably a 100 cc would be fine. But if you put a 300 in there, you know, you, the bottle might collapse a little bit, but the integrity should be, uh, should still be there. Um, you're going to have to sit down and do the math and figure out how much air space is in there, how much you need to remove. It's going to be different based on the different kind of foods you use, you know, whether it's a powder or something with a lot of air or like a noodle. So, you, sorry guys, you're going to have to sit down and do the math, but I'd say, you know, depending on what you have, anywhere from 100 to 300 cc's in a soda bottle. Now, if you're doing like a 2 liter or a 3 liter, you're probably going to want between 300 and 500 cc's. But, you know, like I said, it depends on what you're putting in, how much head space there is, a lot of variables to that. So, your numbers could be different depending on what you pack. You know, so guys, when you're out there starting your long-term food storage, you don't need to spend a fortune. You don't need to spend a lot of, you know, you don't need to buy these $10 buckets. You can store food in any food-grade plastic. Um, and as you look at things around the house, you'll notice there's a lot more uh, food-grade plastic than you would think. A lot of products you buy are in it. It's very common, and you can get it literally out of your recycling bin. You don't need to spend 10 bucks on the bucket, 10 bucks on Mylar bags, and then 10 bucks on oxygen absorbers. You can save yourself and just buy the absorbers and put it in two liter bottles, three liter bottles, whatever you can get your hands on. I know there's a lot of juice bottles out there that have wide mouths that are really good for this. So, you know, your limit is your own imagination. Of course, the only big thing I got to tell you is you got to make sure you use dry food. If you're using foods that aren't dried, you have the potential to get botulism uh, because the moisture in that will make the food rot. Not a good idea for, you know, like for example, you don't want to do this with brown rice. Brown rice has a lot of uh, fats and oils in it and it can make it go rancid and risk of disease. You know, you want to do it with good dry, dry food. Something that doesn't need to be refrigerated, that has a good shelf life. Um, from the studies I've read when home brewing, Using soda bottles, they will maintain integrity for at least a year. I, I haven't seen any advanced studies as for beyond a year, but they are 100% efficient at a year. Beyond that, who knows? Can't tell you. I've never seen studies beyond a year. But, you know, given that rice has a good shelf life just on the shelf, you put rice on the shelf in your pantry, it's going to last for years. You put it in a soda bottle with an oxygen absorber, you know, you're extending the life of that dramatically. As long as you keep it in a cool, dry place, it's not subjected to light or moisture or anything like that that may affect it, you can save yourself a bundle and don't get caught up in the hype and go out and buy stuff you really don't need. You know, fortunately, you know, YouTube videos are a business and a lot of people are just out there to try and capitalize and they really don't care about your budget. They just want views and to make money off their channel. And, you know, it's not necessary. You know, I get, you know what? Showing you a soda bottle and saying, hey, you can store food in this. You know, it really doesn't, you know, it's not very flashy. It's not going to draw a lot of views, but it's true. And guys, if you are doubting me and you don't believe what I'm saying is true, feel free to go on to the... Uh, the LDS Church website, the uh, Mormon Church, 
their website has a lot of information about food storage and they have on there information about storing food in uh, PET containers um, because there are um oh I forgot to mention if you go to places like Walmart or Kmart and you go into the canning section um, usually there's a canning section near the kitchen area where they'll have like canning jars and and uh, you know the things you would need for for canning or preserving food lots of times they will have big uh, PET jars um, meant for food storage larger you know they hold maybe a gallon or something half gallon you can buy those as well um, the church has quite a lengthy amount of uh, information about the safety of storing food in PET containers so if you are doubting what I'm saying is true feel free to do your own research it's on their website there's also a lot of research on home brewing websites about using soda bottles um, as a food grade container so there is a lot of research behind what I'm saying it's not just something I'm pulling out of thin air so I hope this you guys enjoyed this and I hope it's helped a couple of you guys out who are on tight budgets because you know you don't need to go crazy and overspend